Hey guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Bible Class. Hey, glad you're with me. Uh, we're staying down the line of waiting rooms, and we've been talking about Joseph. And, we, <coughs> the you know, the waiting rooms we've really been talking about, we're, we're looking at the fact that God has many, many waiting rooms for us. And we can see it through the lives of, of many of the, the people that lived back in the Bible days. Many times these waiting rooms are like a crisis that are that is happening within our lives. Sometimes it's just we're just put off on a shelf. We're going to be talking about the lost family here uh, today. This will be the last one down the series that we've been talking about with Joseph. But Joseph is this dreamer, and he he we see that first waiting room he was in was that that waiting room of of dreams god gave him a dream god gave him a mission but then we see that he ends up in a pit and sold off into slavery he's betrayed by his brothers then last week we talked about the fact that there was false accusations in regards to him puts him into prison and he's in prison for 13 years well today he comes out of prison of course he he takes and he interprets some dreams and in doing that he comes out of prison but he's still in a waiting room he's still having to miss his family he still has emotions in regards to his family even though they've betrayed him, he still has all these emotions, all these wonderings. He can't pick up a cell phone or pop onto the internet and try to find them. So he's got this waiting room, and this waiting room is his family. Realize just how long that he's been waiting in this waiting room. Because he was in prison 13 years. He was in Potiphar's house. Then we've got seven years that they had the plentiful years where Joseph was having all the goods stored up. So this, this is quite the lengthy process, quite the lengthy waiting room. You know, it's really interesting. I was reading something the other day in one of the uh, trade magazines, and it was talking about waiting rooms, and it was talking about hospital waiting rooms. By the way, <laughs> some interesting fact off of hospital waiting rooms that they cost approximately, and this may be old data, by the way, $700 a square foot to build. That's pretty outrageous, isn't it? Think about the size when you walk into to a hospital waiting room. $700 a square foot to build. That's incredible. Yet the hospitals say it's the very best investment they can make. And you know, a lot of times... These waiting rooms are the very best investment that God can ever put into our lives because that's where we wait until things are ready for us. That's when God's plan is going to unfold. That's when the dreams come to reality. So have you ever lost anything? It's kind of scary sometimes when you lose something. You know, you find something you, you've lost and, and, and all of a sudden you're kind of ecstatic about it, aren't you? You look around and you discover maybe you've been in a store and all of a sudden your child's wandered off and you can't find him any place. Scary feeling. I, I don't know any adult that hasn't felt that at some point. You know, you remember maybe when you went out into some crazy vast sea of... of uh, of a parking lot and say, where in the world did I put my car? And all of a sudden, your white car just kind of blends in with every white car out there. And you go from car to car trying to find your car. Well, you know, those are scary times many times, and there's a lot of different times when we, we lose things and we find things. There's, there's, several Bible, there's several chapters in the Bible that are, that are well known for kind of, I guess, as Christians, we've kind of nicknamed them. We look at 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and we call it the love chapter. You know, look at Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and we call it 
you know, the faith chapter. But we're going to look at Luke, the 15th chapter. And I guess you could call this the lost and found chapter. Uh, Luke kind of relates these three parables here. Two of them are rather short. One's a little more lengthy on the prodigal son. But first, let's kind of, you know, set the stage here of what's going on with Jesus. Um, Our text says that he was eating with tax collectors. He's eating with sinners here. And these people, people are looking down upon him and, and saying, why in the world is he doing all of this? Why? And people don't understand Jesus' mission, much like they didn't understand his mission when he was with the woman in Samaria. But let's pick up in Luke, the 15th chapter. And I'm going to read briefly, and we're not going to spend a whole lot of time here. But it says, it says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and the sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. Notice notice how that they're criticizing him. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, Now remember, a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, kind of one of those things that we learned uh, and was taught from from early on in our, our Bible days, right? And he goes on in verse 4, and he says, What man of you? Having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine to the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he, uh, he, he calleth together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. And then in verse number seven, notice he says, I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So we see that he tells this first parable about a man who loses a sheep. He's relating to them of things that they understand. And remember the setting. The setting is he's eating with he, he, he's eating with publicans. He's eating with tax collectors. He's eating with sinners. These people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, they despise these people. And they were crooks for the most part. But notice Jesus had a mission. And it was a mission to take and to bring these back to God. And then we skip down to verse number 8 of Luke the 15th chapter and then this is a really short little piece and it says neither what woman having ten pieces of silver if she lose one doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it and when she hath found it she calleth her friends and her neighbors together saying rejoice with me for I have found this peace which I've lost likewise I say unto you There is joy in the presence of the angels of God for one more sinner that repenteth. Notice, again, he relates here to something that's been lost, and then it's found, and then the rejoicing. But then the piece I really wanted to catch, because there's nothing quite like this lost family. Remember, Joseph, he lost his family. Now, it was their fault. They betrayed him. But he lost them. And, he, and we can see in the story, as we look at it and, and he's reunited, how emotional that is for, for him. He's found his family again. He's been in a waiting room for some 20 years, and now he's found his family. In Luke, the 15th chapter again, picking up in verse 11, and I think all of us know this particular story, but as it, and he says, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me of the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided into him his living. And not many days after, the younger son took and gathered all and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted the substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. 
and he went and joined himself into a citizen of the country and sent him into the fields to feed his swine. So we start out here as we're looking at this of a, of a, of a son that just decides he's going to go away. He wants away from his father's house. He wants away from his father's rules. He takes any demands that he just that he gets his inheritance and he walks away. And of course we see that he totally destroys his life. And you know, many times we we lose family members like this and they totally lose their life. They have to hit bottom sometimes before there really can be a reunite. pick into verse number 16 here and it says and he would have fain have filled his belly with the husks and the swine what the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he gave unto him and when he came into himself he said how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger I will arise I will go to my father notice though there is a repentance happening here in verse 18 I will say unto him Father, I have sinned against heaven before thee. And I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and he came into his father. But notice this reunite. It's, it reminds you of the reunite when, when Joseph recognized his brothers coming to get food in Egypt. And it says, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great far way off, his father saw him, had compassion, ran, fell on his neck, kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and again in thy sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called thy son. But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet. And then we see in verse 23, he's going to take and he's going to have a feast because the son is found. And he says, and bring forth the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. And this, my son, was dead, is now alive again, and was lost and is found, and then began to be merry. But we do see that not everybody was happy about that in verse 25 because the older son in the field and he came and, and, and drew nigh into the house and he heard the music and he heard the dancing and he called one of the servants and asked what are all these things about what what are all these things meant and he said unto him thy brother is come and thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound and notice it says in verse 28 the brother he's angry you know Families are difficult many times. But this father, he's found his son. This father has found his family. You know, Joseph, he went through a lot. He went through that dreamer stage, like we talked about. But his brothers hated him. They finally took and they threw him into a pit. They sold him off as a slave. He goes off into Egypt. He's away from his family. No cell service, right? He's working in Potiphar's house. And all of a sudden, Potiphar's wife brings those false accusations against him that we talked about last week. He spends 13 years in prison. Then he interprets two dreams for prisoners. Both of them come true. But then Pharaoh has a dream. And uh, we see that Joseph's able to interpret it, interpret it properly. Becomes basically a prime minister of all of Egypt. But still, he's without his family. He's without his heritage. He rose to this great position in Egypt but he had lost his family. Then all of a sudden we notice that his family, who thinks he's dead, who thinks he's gone, thinks he's gone forever, they go to Egypt asking for food because there was plenty of food in Egypt because of 
this this dream that Pharaoh had that Joseph took and interpreted and then took and stored all the food for seven years. And we see that reunion that happens. And we see how that Joseph, he weeps. Now his brothers are scared to death. But he weeps because he found his family. <clears throat> Notice what God says about family. In Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, in verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he'll not depart from it. You know, our family is precious to us. Not all families are going to get back together necessarily, but it's a waiting room that God puts us in many times. Many times we end up with a wayward son, a wayward daughter, maybe a wayward sister or brother. They still have, they, they still have freedom to come back or not come back. But God puts us many times in those waiting rooms. And we have to trust God that it's for our best interest and it's for those family members' best interest. But our job is to train the child right. And sometimes that's pretty difficult. We was talking, Margie and I was talking about that this week actually. Sometimes it's difficult. They don't come with a training manual. And each one of them is quite different. But the Bible says to train them in God's word. He says they won't depart from it. Hey, this is Alan. I'll catch up with you just a little bit later.